What is up everybody? This is Books of the Stock Market. I hope everyone is doing well. This is the Sunday Report where I cover the top articles from Monday through Friday. At the end of each article, I'll be giving my thoughts on how the article could impact or has impacted the financial markets. Without further ado, let's get into this week's Sunday Report. Let's start off with China for this week. We saw a 62% increase in overseas holding of Chinese stocks, which is around $520 billion. In addition to that, we saw a 47% increase in overseas investors getting into the Chinese bond market. The increased interest from foreign investors was pretty surprising to most analysts as the coronavirus has hit not only China pretty hard, but also damaged the global economy. However, China does not seem to be happy about this. They saw a momentous rise ever since 2015 and they're worried about it causing an asset bubble. On March 20th, we saw China's top regulators state that large flows of quote-unquote hot money must be restricted. China's capital markets were never at these kinds of levels in terms of foreign interest. In the past, they would have limited the amount foreigners can buy and would make foreigners use Hong Kong as an avenue to invest in mainland China. To lessen the growing asset bubble, China has allowed Chinese investors to invest more in overseas securities. It seems like countries all over the world are experiencing asset bubble problems. This problem is mostly caused by governments printing out so much money and printing money is always asset inflationary. We also saw different bank managers in New York come out this week saying that they are looking for exit strategies due to the millionaire's tax. New York has always had a higher tax rate but this was okay due to the business opportunities New York provided. However, ever since the coronavirus hit, New York City has never been the same. And with Governor Cuomo expecting to raise taxes even more, we see many New Yorkers wanting to exit from the city. Not only are individuals looking for exits out of the city, but entire investment firms are looking for other cities to move to. The proposal that is supposed to pass states that New York City top earners must pay around 15.73% in combined state and city taxes. Furthermore, there will be additional surcharges to people earning more than $1 million. The combination of these two proposals even beats California. The proposals are expected to pass as there really is only an argument between progressive and moderate Democrats, and it is believed that most big companies will not move out of New York but small companies that are barely making it will probably have to move out as it will become too expensive. It looks like New York City is facing the same problem with California as big corporations are not willing to pay more taxes and instead are wanting to relocate to avoid these taxes. Unlike last week where we saw oil fall for most of the week, we saw oil rise 1% starting off this week. The price increase is mostly attributed to U.S. service activity reaching a record high in March. Furthermore, China's service sector also showed its sharpest increase in sales in the last three months. England is also looking to ease some coronavirus restrictions which is always good news for oil. However, even if oil started off this week up 1%, it is still down from last week after we heard from OPEC Plus that it will be increasing oil production. But it's important to note that oil falling is not guaranteed due to the risk of new restrictions in Europe. With the death toll on COVID reaching 3 million deaths, many countries are re-entering lockdowns. Therefore, we see oil consolidate a bit as no one knows how effective the vaccinations will be. On the VIX, we saw someone bet that the VIX will rise to 40 and won't be lower than 25 for the month of July. Currently, VIX is trading at the 17 level range, so the person who was betting on this price action is expecting over a 100% increase. This trader bought around 200,000 calls which is almost as big as the daily volume of VIX calls based on the 20-day average. This caused the CBOE VIX index to show call options being 4 times more active than puts. In total, around 1 million of VIX options were traded on Thursday which is much higher than the average. Although we do not exactly know the reason behind this trade, we can guess that the looming tax hike and inflation problems would be part of this person's reasoning. Furthermore, historically when we see the VIX hit the $17 range, we usually see a spike upwards. However, it is important to note that this could be a hedge. The S&P 500 has caused hedging to be relatively inexpensive, so someone might just have bought some insurance for the overwhelming bullish position they have. We saw the dollar fall late this week. The US dollar fell to a two-week low as treasury yields started to fall. Treasury yields started to fall due to the unexpected rise in US weekly jobless reports. We saw the dollar fall 0.42% for Thursday and is at its lowest since March 23rd. Jobless claims for the week of April 3rd was at 744,000. The Dow Jones estimate was 694,000 while the previous week's jobless claims was at 728,000. 
As you can see, we beat both expectations, which is pretty bad considering how everyone is pushing the narrative that things are getting better. Since we saw jobless claims rise, we saw treasury yields fall as treasury yields usually represent the future growth of the United States. The only good thing that came out of Thursday was the Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell saying that central banks are nowhere near reducing its support for the US economy and that inflation is only a temporary problem. Despite this news, the S&P 500 ended up 0.42% while the Nasdaq 100 ended up 1.04%. There was nothing new for this week as the usual fears of inflation and coronavirus still linger. Therefore, we saw the markets just consolidate for the week. Well, that's it for me. If you like this video, press the like button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. If you don't want to miss out on any future content, press the subscribe button. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see everyone next week.